point across. And you're going to be like, Mike, what does this have to do with what we're talking about today? But there's a moral to the story, and I want you to see it. And hopefully, you'll be able to tell me what that moral is by the last word of the video. Um, Sam Kinison was a, a preacher turned comedian with one of the foulest mouths out of any preacher turned comedian ever. Um, and um, he was very famous for quite a while, and then he was killed in a car crash. Um, and it was a tragic loss because I found him extremely entertaining, even though most of his act was just yelling. Um, other people have tried that and it hasn't worked out so well. Um, Sam was the original yell at the audience people. Uh, Don Rickles was the original insult people comedian. He was the original yell at the audience people. Uh, so, what did I turn it off? All right, where are we at time-wise? 4.29. Do we have to start right on time? Can we, we're going? Hey, we're going. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to Cinema Makeup School's Marketing with Mike. Uh, so I'm going to start this again with this uh, video from Sam Kinison, and I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you get the message from it. And here we Go. I'm trying to do the best I can, folks. I swear I'm going to do the best I can. I just want to do things to play ball with. I just like to see the same commercials of little kids out there, you know, coming. I watch this on TV, I'm going to go on and on and on and on. How cool. Because I know the film is going to be the same. Can you understand that? So, if you didn't get what he was saying, he was talking about those world hunger commercials where they have the little emaciated children with the flies walking across their eyeballs, and you know, I mean, it's horrible. It's, it's gut-wrenching to watch. And I don't know if you caught what he said, but it's like, couldn't the film crew give the kid a sandwich? They're there shooting it anyway. Couldn't they give them a sandwich? No. And then you got the director going, don't feed them yet. Don't feed them yet. So that, that's the, the joke part of it. And then the whole world hunger, don't send them money, don't send them food, send them U-Hauls and suitcases so they can move to where the food is. That's the punchline. Move to where the food is. Now, the extended version of this routine, he talks about the whole desert thing, and he's like, you see this? This is sand. This is sand. Nothing grows here. Move to where the food is! And so that's how you end world hunger. But in, in marketing terms, what I'm trying to say is you go to where the food is. Go to where the work is. If you think you're going to go to cinema makeup school and then go back to Sheboygan, and get jobs working on movies, it doesn't happen, okay? So, whenever you're marketing anything, you have to know what your market is. You can't be, you know, um, like I was saying, you can't like live in Sheboygan and work on a movie, right? If you're marketing a product, you have to know the customer who's gonna buy that product. You have to know what their needs are, what their desires are, what will it fulfill for them? What is the benefit to them? A lot of people create a product or a service that nobody wants because they want to do it. And then they wonder why 
Nobody wants their product. There was no market research. They didn't understand the customers. Now for us, the customers are movie producers, actors. If you're doing weddings, the bride or the mother of the bride are your customers, right? You gotta know what they want, what they need, and then you can provide them with the service that they will pay you for, okay? So, I use this video, but I use the extended foul mouth long version um, that's fantastic, but because we're, we're uh, doing Facebook Live with this, I didn't want to actually put all the F-bombs and all that stuff that he has in the, in the video. But if you want to look it up, it's called, uh, well, I mean, just look up Sam Kinison, World Hunger, and watch the long version, and it's much better. Um, all right, so I'm going to now go to the PowerPoint. And this is what we're talking about today. Who already has a website? Too few. A couple of you. Less, I would say, what, maybe 15% of the audience has a website. All right. Why, why don't you have a website? Is there a reason you don't have it yet? Are you just lazy? Okay, Wix is free for a while. Yes? All right, but if you wait until your portfolio is exactly as you want it, you could have lost many, many, many clients by not having any presence, okay? You want to have a presence, whether it's a website, social media, you have to have a presence where people don't know you exist. You can take jobs while you're still in school. Why not? They don't know you don't know what you're doing. Only you know you don't know what you're doing. And you probably know more than they do. And if you know something someone else does, doesn't know, they'll pay you for that service or knowledge. Right? So there's no reason to hesitate on building your website. Heck, don't even tell anyone about it, but start building it now. There's no reason to not start building it. And then when you feel comfortable, launch it. Tell the world about it. Put links everywhere to it. But if you're just not doing it because your portfolio isn't where you want it, it may never be where you want it. So, and I'll say that it's like looking at myself. Every makeup I do, I look at objectively. And I think, yeah, that would work in a movie, but it's not as good as it could be. This is how I can improve it next time. That's okay. It's okay for me to not think it's perfect. It's never going to be perfect, but it could be better. But to the general public, it looks fantastic. I mean, look at all the crap that's on Instagram and Facebook posting their, their, their soda can in the eye. I guarantee you guys all have better stuff than that. Yet they have 10 million followers saying how great their work is. And you know it's garbage. So don't hesitate. Start building the site. All right. Let's move on. Websites. All right, so where do you get a website? Well, anyone a Creative Cloud member, Adobe Creative Cloud, do you know they give you a free website? Yeah, they do. It's called Adobe Portfolio. And you can look it up at myportfolio.com. And if you have Creative Cloud, they give you a very beautiful, responsive website. You can't do everything with it. It doesn't support like flyouts and things like that. Like you can't have like, you ever been on a website and you go to click out of it and something pops up on the screen, it's like, wait, don't you dare go yet until you give us money. The problem is, if you get the free Wix site, it's like you at wixsite.com. Paid sites to be able to put your web address on there, which you should have, yourname.com, yournamemakeup.com, or yournamemua.com. Some people don't get it, and that's why I don't like it. Uh, but anyway, you should get a domain name that is easily found, all right? So if they know your name and they Google your name, your website comes up. Does that make sense? 
Now, I'm not going to talk about SEO and all that crap. I'm not into SEO. I think it's a bunch of voodoo and they change it every few months anyway. So one, one day your website's at the top when they type in your actual name, your website will be at the top. Two days later, your actual website with your actual name is on page three of Google. They change it all the time. So SEO to me is like, it's like voodoo. It's like you gotta follow it and figure it out every freaking few weeks. Anyway, Wix is great. Uh, Squarespace, anybody have a Squarespace? Okay, what do you, do you like it? Hmm. Keanu Reeves likes it. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's what I wrote. Keanu Reeves dates it. Um, and you know, he's John Wick, so you're going to listen to him or he's going to kill you. Um, so I don't know much about Squarespace. And I think there, when you go into Squarespace, their homepage doesn't tell you much about how it's going to be. And I don't like that. I feel it's not as transparent with what it's about and how much it costs and all that. You have to dig a little deeper. And so they might be beautiful sites. I, I don't know because I, I don't use them. Anybody use WordPress? Anybody? You use WordPress? How is it? It's good, but I have someone to do for me, but when they want to fix, they go to WordPress. It's good. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to, to fix it up. Yeah, I mean, but to me, I, and I know that they, they have some basic templates, and then you can buy customized templates that you can change around and stuff like that. Um, I just don't think it's as customizable as Wix. Of course, WordPress is free, unless you buy templates, obviously. Um, and my last thing on this page is play for free until you figure out which one is best for you. If they don't have a free option, how are you going to know if you like it or not until you spend the money? So my thought is don't spend the money until you know you like it. And that's why I think Wix is so great, because you can play and play and play until you're happy with it. And then you can say, all right, I'm going to buy it and pay your 150 bucks for the year, which is pretty cheap, folks. That's pretty cheap. That's like, what, $12.50 a month for a web presence. Not bad. OK, what's next? What should your site have? Well. These are your basic pages. Your home page, which I believe should be one big, catchy, beautiful image that grabs them immediately. It shouldn't look like chaos. It shouldn't have a million pictures, in my opinion. It should only have one main image. Now, you can have that image rotate, right? It could be on for 10 seconds and then change to another picture, and then to another picture. Right? You could do that, but it's still just one image at a time. I think that is very classy, very elegant. Simple is elegant. All right? I'll just say that. What, what's more elegant, a lot of rhinestones or a string of pearls? A string of pearls is very considered elegant. Tons of rhinestones, not considered elegant. It's too much. You don't know where to look. Right? It should obviously have a gallery, which would be your portfolio, a brief uh, bio, and uh, possibly a link to your IMDb if you have one. Testimonials is extremely important in marketing. If you don't know this, know it now. Having somebody else say great things about you is so much more powerful than whatever you can say about yourself. You say it about yourself, you're bragging. Somebody else says it about you, people believe it. So testimonials are extremely important. If you have somebody that loves your work and is willing to put it in writing and put their name to it, put that on your site. Put it everywhere. You know, if, uh, I mean, if, let, let's say you, you post something on Instagram and the Rick Baker likes it. Screen grab that shit and put it on your website. Rick Baker liked my stuff. That's almost like a testimonial. Not really, but almost, right? Uh, and you want a contact page or a way to contact you in some way. Uh, I think a contact page is great. And I'm going to show you some website examples, much to the dismay of some of the people who allowed me to post them. Um, I think a contact page works really well because 
you don't have to actually put your email address on that page because you just fill in the info and click send and they don't know your email address until you respond to them. Why that is good is because if you have your email address written out, posted, and it's token spammers, and you're gonna start getting emails, you're gonna wonder. And so you're getting like, you know, uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. I want, I'm a girl, I don't need Viagra. <laughs> you know, whatever. You, you don't want that kind of spam. Now, also, most of you were female, some are male, but most of you were female. Do you want random strange dudes knowing your phone number, your email address? You, do you want that? Some people put there looking for a date, not to hire you, or if they're looking to hire you, it's for the wrong thing. So I think a contact page is safer for you girls. That might sound sexist, but I'm looking out for you. I'm a dad. I look out for people. That's what I do. I wouldn't even let my Because I'll tell you, there's a couple of psycho girls from this school that are like, I'm going to marry your son. I'm like, no, you're not. Name.com. <laughs> That's what your, your web address should be. So you're easily found. All right. So what if you have more than one specialty? Should you have more than one specialty? Well, that can go both ways. All right, if you have more than one specialties, the best method is to have more than one website. Uh, brides, uh, runway, um, special effects, character. That, 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 that you have like 20 different galleries. What do you specialize in? Absolutely nothing. And that's how people are going to look at it. If you're a brain surgeon, do you do pediatrics too? A surgeon gets paid a lot more than a general practitioner. So if you want to be a general practitioner, that's fine, but you'll never make the money that a specialist. Your website is one specific thing that you do best. Now, if you want to do other things too, you can have a separate website. You know, MariahGore.com, MariahBeauty.com. Okay, because then they can't see anything else but your specialty. You do weddings. How many do weddings? Some of you have done weddings, right? Rose, you do weddings, yes? Yes. Of course. Do you even raise your hand? Uh, if you do weddings, do you think the bride wants to see your soda can in the eye gag? Where the scissors up the nose or the scissors in the eyes? Right? With the zipper face? Brides don't want to see that shit, so don't do it. If you're going to have a bridal website, it's a bridal website. Now, you can have other forms of beauty on there because they'll be attracted to that. But they're not going to care about the, 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 the slit throat gag you saw in special effects class with the blood squirting out. Brides don't want that. Maybe one or two brides might if they're a little on the edgy side. But. Um, so, as it says, if you want to do brides, they don't want to see your gore. If you want to do work in a lab, they don't want to see your brides. If I run a lab, I don't care about your bridal makeup. I need you to seam and patch and make molds. So that's what I want to see. Now, you could do a single site that has both. And you can't even make it so the two different sections of your website look like two completely different websites. You can customize it in such a way that all of your gore stuff has the black page, right? And all of your beauty stuff has the white page. And uh, what you have on your home page, your very first page, is the choice. If they click brides or weddings or beauty, they'll never see the other stuff. They actually have to go back to the home page to click on the other link to see the other stuff. Does this make sense? So. Do you, uh, yes. Do you know if Wix does, has an option for that, or? Yeah, you create it. Okay. It, it isn't, it, it, it's one website. Okay. It's, it's one website, it's yourname.com, or whatever. And your home page, you just put two links, or two pictures. You have a picture of beauty, and you have a picture of gore. 
Hmm. I don't think you should do that. Just have two legs. View my beauty site, view my special effects site, right? Because again, if you have a bride going there, they don't want to see the gore. Yes. It's a good question, and I will get to it because there's a whole section on Instagram. Uh, but yes, you want to have multiple. All right. What's next? All right, Facebook. Now, some of you young people are going to say, Facebook is for old people. Facebook is stupid. Right? Right? Some of you are thinking that, as it says on my screen up there, many of you think Facebook isn't cool. But people that hire you are generally not your age. They're generally my age. If you're gonna work in a creature shop, the owners are not 22. They're not. So, having a Facebook presence is not an uncool thing. It's a very cool thing. So, now if you have a Facebook already, there's some things you need to do. You need to create a Facebook page, which is free. It's just a separate page. That's your business page. You can also create groups, but I don't think groups are necessary for this. You just want a page. That's your business page. And it strictly shows your makeup work doesn't show any of your personal stuff. You should never show any of your personal stuff. It's professional, strictly professional. And if you have multiple product lines, again, if you have multiple specialties, you can have multiple Facebook pages. They're free. You can have as many as you want. Of course, there's a lot more work to maintain all of those, but it's two different presences. One for your beauty, one for your gore, whatever it is. So you can have multiple Facebook pages. But I'm going to say this, because I think this is really, really important. You need to clean up your personal page so that your personal page is also your professional page. You don't want to have, <clears throat> let me just read it. No relationships, ups and downs. I hate my boyfriend today. What an asshole, whatever. No self-pity stuff. Oh, I had such a bad day today. Please, someone cheer me up. Does that sound like a, a professional person who's very successful? No, it does not. No drunk or stoned pics. No bikini pics, girls. That, I don't mean that to sound sexist, but it ain't like I ain't seen it, so I'm saying it. You should be strictly professional even on your personal page. Now, if you want to have that presence where people can see your relationship stuff and your ups and downs and your sadness and your self-pity and your cat videos, Sarah, <laughs> and all of that, then you have a separate Facebook page that isn't your name. Make it, your, make it a fictitious name and only your friends and family have that. And no one who's going to hire you could ever find it. Does this make sense? Is it hard to do? No. Just clean up your shit and make another one for your shit. <laughs> Does this make sense? OK. Instagram. Same. Your work only. No personal pics anywhere to be found. None. Not your new shoes, or your new bag, or your new manicure. And I'm saying this because I had a student a few years ago. Are you filming me? Then you're looking at your phone. Oh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> so, the, the uh, audience that's watching online has no clue what I just did. They're like, Mike is a spaz. Anyway, <clears throat> the reason I bring this up is because a few years ago, we had a student who was lazy as the day is long. I mean, the laziest student ever. Think of the laziest person in your class 
and it's like 10 times worse than that, okay? All she cared about was her expensive heels, her expensive manicure, her Gucci bag, the this or that, and, that. and she wanted everything handed to her on a silver platter, didn't want to work for her grades, and it wasn't just her, she brought people down with her because they thought she was cool, right? Because she's such a rebel. So we had a group of girls that were all the laziest things I've ever seen. So, <clears throat> fast forward, now I, I, had, I had an argument with her, other teachers had arguments with her, she really didn't want to work for a living. And <clears throat> about a, a year later, I ran into her in the hallway here. She was gonna do one of those gigs that were posted in the jobs email, and she came here to talk to Christy or something. And <clears throat> she saw me in the hall, and she actually gave me a hug. I was like, oh wow, I guess we've, that's all under the carpet now, or all under the bridge, or whatever you call it. You know, it's in the past. I was like, cool, okay, maybe she's growing up. Not long after that, we got a letter saying she wanted to sue the school because she doesn't get any work. And because Mike Spatola specifically made her lose all her desire to work as a makeup artist. And it, the school has never ever given her work, even though she came in here and I saw her in the hallway taking a gig to do. But what happens is when mommy and daddy pays for school, they want to see some results, right? But when the child says, well, the school's supposed to give us work and they didn't give us any work and, you know, and, and, and our teachers, and that Mike Spatola, he, oh my God, he yelled at me and said bad things. Oh my God, she teased an autistic child in class who's a high functioning and knew that he was being teased. So what did I do? I went to her Instagram and her Facebook and looked. Do you know how many makeup pictures were in that Instagram? That's supposed to be your professional Instagram. Three out of a hundred and some photos, three at the very bottom were her either applying makeup or a makeup that she did, three pictures. How's she gonna get work with three makeup pictures at the bottom of, who goes to the bottom of anyone's Instagram? Who? Tell me when was the last time you went to the bottom of anyone's Instagram? Because you know that's their worst stuff, right? That's all old news. You know what she did have? Pictures of her heels, pictures of her manicures, pictures of her Gucci bag, a picture of her drinking champagne naked in a tub. If she's going to get hired for anything, it ain't makeup. So, I, you know, I tell this story, it's a little funny, but it's really not very funny at all because this is a person that's blaming us for her lack of success in the makeup world. Clean up your Instagrams. Don't post any of that stuff. I don't want to see your fingernails unless they're attached to a makeup brush in somebody's face doing makeup. That's the only time I want to see your manicure. Does that make sense? Okay. Who has manicures on their Instagram? Be honest. Oh, you're lying. Some of you do. <laughs> All right. So, one Instagram for every product line. The only gore on there if you're looking for brides. <clears throat> Again, if you need a friends and family Instagram or Facebook, make it under a name that the general public can't find you under. And then the last line on there is, ugh, new algorithm. Gotta wait and see. Has anyone noticed, uh, uh, most of you are on Instagram, yes? Have you noticed that you actually lost followers and your likes have gone down drastically in just this week? New algorithm this past weekend. What that means is they're figuring out new ways to post photos and when they should be posted and who gets priority and shit like that. So, we gotta wait and see how it plays out until somebody goes, this is what you need to do to get your lights back on. Now, 
this shouldn't be a society that's based on likes. But sadly, it helps. So we do it. All right. Twitter, Tumblr, Pinterest. Can't hurt or probably don't do, it won't do much for you either. That's just my feelings. Uh, Twitter, what does it do? It, it's self-pity or what I have for lunch or what movie I saw last night or if you're Donald Trump, then we don't go there. So these can't hurt, it's another presence online, but is it gonna do anything for you? Does anyone want to hire you because they saw a tweet? Now, you can tweet your web address over and over and over again. Eventually somebody will click on your web address. But it's really not gonna do a lot for you. Um, I say stick with your website, stick with Facebook, stick with Instagram, those are the big three. Do those. You do those consistently, you do those well, you're far better off than doing 10 million things that bring you nothing. Uh, who has a Tumblr? Is it cat pictures? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So, does anyone really go to Tumblr anymore to look at stuff? No. Did anyone, uh, anyone hear of Vero? Vero, does anyone know what I'm talking about? A few of you do, but some of you are looking like... All right, Vero was supposed to replace Instagram. And you know what? It looks nice. I like the dark backgrounds. I like that you can post stuff and nobody goes, no, 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 you can't post that. You know, you want to post something that's gory, nobody censors it, right? Um, I think, honestly, the photos look better on it than they do on Instagram. I like that you can post links on Vero. You can't post links on Instagram. You can only put the link to your website on your main page, but you can't put a link in a post. It doesn't work. And until you get verified on Instagram and have over 10,000 followers, you do. Are you verified? Okay. But if you get, if you, verified means you can actually, in your stories, put links to your website instead of just links to other people's profiles. Okay? Um, I don't see it as a huge thing, but it can't hurt, especially if you have, you know, 100,000 Instagram followers and you post links and they look at your stories. Because I think Instagram stories is cool, right? You can post, you can, you can have your phone here while you're doing a makeup and post a little clip of you doing a makeup. And then you can post the result of the makeup. And then you can post the, the monster going, ah, in the camera. And it entertains people and you can put little refers back to your page. And if you're verified, you can put a link to your website. So it's kind of cool. All right. Um, Pinterest, the only thing I think it's good for is creating mood boards for brides. You know, if you're doing photo shoots or something like that, you can create a mood board and discuss with the photographer and discuss with the model and things like that. Or you can, the bride can, could make a little collection and send you that collection. That's the only thing Pinterest is good for, in my opinion, right now. So if you have a Pinterest, great. If you don't, don't bother starting one. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, and then YouTube, that's another long discussion that we're not going to talk about because we know that most people on YouTube are, it's BS, right? You don't want to be another BS person. All right, mobile apps. You guys know you could have a mobile app? You could. It could cost you a fortune or it could be cheap. But a mobile app, I said this to somebody earlier because we were talking about business cards. What happens with business cards? Anybody got a, yeah, exactly. You give somebody your business card and they stick it in their pocket or they stick it in their wallet and it never gets seen again until they throw it in the trash. And then it really never gets seen again. To me, it's like one of those things, thank God they're really cheap. Because, you know, if you want business cards and you want them cheap, you can go to gotprint.com. It's a website, but they're in Burbank, so you can actually go pick up your stuff. So you don't have to pay shipping if you're in the neighborhood. You could go drop by and pick them up. Um, they do great quality. I've been using them for like 16 years. Um, 
but I don't give out business cards because I know they're just gonna in the trash. I mean, now you got phones that can beam your phone number into their phone, right? But if you had a mobile app that you could click send app to somebody else's phone and they click on it and now the app is on their phone, that's just as fast as handing them a business card and they, they could delete it from their phone, but they're not gonna throw it in the trash. So I think this is something to explore. Um, it's kind of a cool thing. And within that app, you can have a call button that literally dials the phone for you when you push the button to call them or them to call you. Um, it's like a little mini website. It can have links to all your other stuff. It can have a link to your website, a link to all your social media and an email link. Click the email link, type a message, send it to you. It's convenient. It does so much more than a business card would ever do. Um, so I think it's, it's worth exploring, yes. Uh, it's gonna cost you more to do that kind of thing, but yes, you can set it up with like Square or other things, like you could put a PayPal link on there, I think. Um, I'm not a, an app expert, but I've made a bunch of apps, and I can't do like super crazy things, but I can make an app that does everything previous that that I told you. And I think they're great because nobody's gonna throw them away, right? And when they think of you, all they have to do is press the little picture on their phone, and it brings up your app. All right, so, yes, yes. Well, that is uh, for photographers. Now, you're not a photographer, maybe. That doesn't mean you can't buy into it. Um, I've owned a, I owned a photo studio for over 20 years, and so I have a lot of photo clients. And literally, for every photo client I have, they get an app. And what do they do with that app? They share it with all their friends. So it's the best word of mouth advertising that I have. Now I'm gonna show you something. Let me get out of this for a second. Do, 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 do. Where is it? Is it here? There's Sam Kinison. And all right. So this is some, some samples of websites and Facebook pages and stuff like that. Um, so this is a mobile app I made for a girl named Claire. And Claire is a graduate of the school. And this is it's like a mini website. Let me actually blow it up. It's not only a phone app, but it's like a mini website. So you can scroll through and it's got, now she chose to do a lot of pictures. Um, and then it's got, you know, a little blurb about her. It's got her Facebook link, her Instagram link, a call button, an email button, and a website button. What more do you need, right? And down here, you got a button that allows you to send to other people. Via Facebook, via Twitter, you can share it multiple ways. And if you're on your phone, there's one more that goes to the phone. So, it's not her website. Now I'm gonna show you her actual website. This is just her phone app. But it's like, that's a, right, you just, if you look at her phone app address on the computer, it's a website. If you look at it on a phone, it's a mobile app. And that's a really cool thing. This is her actual website. Isn't it what I said? One big splash picture taking up the whole, pretty much the whole page. It grabs your attention, it's got her name at the top, and then it's got a couple of links. Portfolio, bridal, about me, contact. Simple, that's everything I asked for, except for testimonials, which I think she should put in, because she's done, I can't tell you how much work this girl has done, she's worked her butt off. Um, her portfolio, if you click on portfolio, this isn't loading very quickly because of the internet here, the Wi-Fi, um, but you can see it's still loading. But this is, you can tell from her website that she's a beauty artist. No effects, no creatures, 
no gore, nothing. She's got a bridal section, you know, like before and afters of moms and brides. Uh, her about section is just a little, it's so tiny. Um, if I were her, I'd blow that up a little so you could actually read it. Um, and then she's got her contact page, which I don't like because it's just her email address here and you click on it. What happens with the email address? And spiders grab it, you get spammed, and wonder why you're getting Viagra ads in your email. And then it's got her social media links underneath. But she did a lot right with this website. She doesn't know I'm showing this. Claire, I hope you're not watching. But I think she did a lot right with this website. Now, let's look at somebody you all know. Nellie. All right? One image. That's her homepage. One image. And she's got testimonials. Right there. You get testimonials, show people how good you are by what other people say. And then she's got gallery, right? And the gallery is a single picture at a time with this cool little hand that points to the next one. And you know her work is the best. Um, it's got a press page with like magazine stuff. It's got a contact page. And her contact, she's got her email address on there for anyone to email her. Um, and her representation. So if you click that, it takes her to, to her agent, right? And then it goes back to her homepage. Simple, clean, effective, stunning images, always. All right, now uh, let's go to, hmm. This is Mariah's. And it's got the simple one image, which I like. It would be really nice if it was a custom image that you did. Um, and I'm not, when I crit critique these sites, I'm not beating anybody up. I'm just saying things to help you improve what you already have. Um, <clears throat> she's got her email address right there for spiders to grab, right? It would be better if she had a contact page where you have to fill out the little boxes and click send. Um, and then she's got three galleries. And the same three galleries are here. And then she's got her Instagram and her Facebook. It's simple. I like simple. Simple is elegant. Pearls, not rhinestones. Okay? So keep it simple. Now, if I were her, eventually, I would separate the beauty from the character. The hair and the beauty could go together. Why not? Your hairstyles are beauty hairstyles, avant-garde hairstyles, but they're not creatures or characters. But you go back and you click on character, that sure doesn't look like beauty stuff. So you want to keep them separate, I think. Or at least make it so that they can choose, but then once they choose, it's almost a completely separate website, and you can easily do that just by adding more pages and links and have them blind. In other words, there's no navigation to them up top. All right? You just have the two links, and once you click on that link, the only navigation from then on is within that specialty. All right, now let's look at somebody who's got a web address that's 10 miles long. Um, let's go to our homepage first. Now, I dig this, but it doesn't show what she does for a living at all. How do I know she's a makeup artist? You don't. She could be a fashion designer, but then shouldn't she have clothes, right? So I do think, even though I really like this, it's very clean. It doesn't say what you do for a living. Where does it say makeup, body painting? It doesn't say any of that. Okay, so that's something I think would be important, although you get your social media down here, which is cool. The about section, very pretty. <clears throat> Here's what I don't like. 
you're 18 years old. I don't want to know that. Because to me, 18 means completely inexperienced. But your work doesn't show completely inexperienced. Your work is beautiful. It's not the work of an 18-year-old. Don't tell people you're 18. The photo looks very young. I'd maybe get a, a more mature profile pic than this, because this looks like an 18-year-old. And yes, you're 18. But if you present yourself more maturely, people will take you more seriously. Make sense? So that's one thing I would change, because that's easy to change. That's an immediate, quick, boom, done. <clears throat> and then, visually, this bugs me. You got this top section is wider than your next section. It just, but visually, it bugs me. I'm a visual person, any artist is, um, and to me, that, it just bugs a little bit. Is there anything really, really wrong with it? No, but visually, I think it could be more attractive if it were lined up. Um, and I have no problem with putting your education, your achievements. I think the achievements should be way over top of the education. I think education should be at the bottom. Yes, I work for Cinema Makeup School and I'm saying education should be at the bottom. Nobody cares where you went to school. Nobody cares that you went to school. All they care about is how good are you? You're good. Let them know that. Put the achievements up top. Education, bottom. That's like, when you, when you start doing resumes, which I have problems with resumes too because they get tossed out as well, and most people make them way too long. I think the average attention span with anything right now is like 15 seconds. Why? Facebook videos. Have you ever noticed you're watching a video and it's pretty interesting, but after about 15 seconds, you're like, okay, next. You don't even watch it to the end. Short attention span. That's where we're at right now. And so if your resume is three pages long, I promise you, they will not read it. I won't. You give me your three page resume, the first thing I'll do is I'll take a red marker and start crossing stuff off. You guys know Madison, right? Our intern, Madison. Buzz on the sides, right? Madison, super talented, lovely, warm person. Ooh, she, she gave me her resume and I was like, nope, 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 nope. I wouldn't read it too long. So, my resume, you guys know I've been doing this like 40 years. The last resume I made was one page. Did it have everything I've ever done on it? No. I couldn't put everything I've ever done on four pages. But nobody cares about the ultra low budget garbage that nobody's seen. They want to know the Terminator 2s, the Predator 2, the Edward Scissorhands, the, the, you know, anything that won an Oscar or an Emmy or, you know, was a best picture or, you know, did great at a film festival. You know, they want to know all the good stuff. They don't care about the bad stuff. I don't have education on there. I didn't go to school. So why do I want to? I could tell them the high school I went to. Nobody's going to care, except other alumni from Mainland Regional High School, Linwood, New Jersey, right? Nobody cares. Now, if you've worked under an amazing makeup artist, an Oscar-winning makeup artist, you assisted them, or they mentored you, yeah, put that shit down. But nobody wants to know anything that they just truly don't care about. How good are you? That's what they want to know. In marketing, sometimes it isn't even how good you are, it's how much do you care about them. If you're talking on the phone with somebody, somebody calls you, they don't care how good you are until you show them how much you care about their project. They want to know that you're invested in them or their project or whatever they're hiring you for. 
So they don't care how good you are until they know how much you care. All right, that's, that's full one-on-one. -on -one. We'll get into that another day. All right, so what else we got here? Now, she's got her portfolio, which has four tabs. She's got beauty. This is clean. These all blow up, right? Yep, they all blow up, so that's good. Go back. Um, then we got editorial. This first one, top left, super cool, I like it. This dragon thing on the face is very cool. I dig these, these are great. Why don't you put something like that on the home page behind your name? Or under your name, or over your name, but somewhere that it's like, when, that, when they open your page, it smacks them in the face. And goes, whoa, holy crap, this is beautiful. That's what you need. All right, what else we got? Body art, super cool stuff again. Digital art, you only got one piece. I'd probably just get rid of that until you have several more pieces to put up, at least three or four more pieces, and then call it done. This, I think, is super cool. You click on that Instagram link, and there's our Instagram. I need to know how to do this. Is it just one of the plugins that Wix has? That's super cool. They can see your Instagram without going to Instagram and leaving your website. I dig it. All right, so for the most part, I really like her site. Could it use testimonials? Yes. Could it use to lose her 18-year-old age status? Yes. Don't you have, where is it? Oh, under the About tab, I would put this as a separate tab up top. You have contact. This is what I'm talking about. When I say a contact page, you just want one of these little boxes things that they fill out with the mandatory name. Oh, it says Mike Spatola. Email. No, I mean, whenever I click on these, it, it has the autofill. I'm on my laptop. So if I click on name, it's gonna, it wants to autofill, you know, all my aliases. Um, their email. And then subject is optional and message is optional. I say, make them not optional. Because then why are they contacting you? You gotta know why. So let them, let them tell you why. Um, doesn't have to be 10 paragraphs, but make it mandatory that they write a few words in there before they can click send. Uh, but there you go, there's that, there's your email address right there. I'm glad you don't have your home phone number or your cell phone number or your home address on here because then you have this cutie picture of you. Some guys are going to be like, hey, hey, baby. I want to hire you on my movie, right? Stay, you know, stay away from that stuff. All right. Um, Facebook pages, what do we got here? No, no, this is me. All right, this is my, this is my personal Facebook page, and look, it's all work stuff. There's, there's our intern girls, okay? This, it's, it's mostly work stuff. That's my wife and I at a movie premiered, a movie I worked on, right? There's V and me. It's all, oh, there's me as a magician. <laughs> I was a professional magician. And makeups, I did. This is my personal page. It's all work. My real personal stuff, I don't want people to know. That's my business, not theirs. Don't share your life on Facebook. And if you do, only let your friend, your real friends and your real family in on what your name is, okay? Then I have a Facebook page. This is my Monstrous Makeup Manual page. I'm sorry it shows you the statistics because I'm logged in. So normally you won't see the statistics here. You'd immediately see posts, video I made, there's my girls again, you know, pictures. This is all some brushes that were gifted to me. Very nice. Uh, makeup demos, makeups, right? No personal stuff. 
And believe me, if it's the least bit personal, it's related to the industry, right? I have a kid, do you see him anywhere? Nope. <laughs> First of all, my kid doesn't want to be on my Facebook. Oh. He's too cool for that. Um, he's got a Facebook, but he never posts on it. Um, all right, so that's what I'm getting at, is you need to have a Facebook page for your business stuff, and you need to clean up your personal page so it looks like a business page too. You do that, and people will start taking you seriously. Because I guarantee you, if you email someone, like you get the jobs emails, right? And you email somebody, before you ever meet them, they're Googling you. They're gonna look at your Facebook, they're gonna look at your Instagram, they're gonna look for your website, they're gonna look, because if they don't see any of that, they're probably gonna cancel the appointment. They won't meet you. They wanna know you before they meet you. So, and if they Google you and they find your personal page and it's got you in a bathtub with champagne, they're gonna hire you for the wrong thing. Does all this make sense? Okay. Change it to Nora Jones. <laughs> <laughs> then people will be looking for you because you're the singer. Um, I don't know. I mean, you do have a very common name, and that's that's rough. You know how many Mike Spatolas are in the world? Only a few. I have two cousins named Mike Spatola. They don't do what I do. <clears throat> um, so, are we good on all of this stuff? Now, there are services, like I was, I was talking about the apps earlier. You can Google it, you can look them up. There's different services that allows you to build your own apps. And um, this is one I found earlier today. They have a free plan. You can only edit it for 48 hours and then it's stuck like that for the rest of your career. No, it really says that. It says app editing for the first 48 hours. After that, no more editing. But when you get into the paid plans, it's unlimited editing, unlimited editing, unlimited editing. Now, if you want to be able to download it from Google Play or Android or the Apple Store, well, <clears throat> The two middle ones, which are getting expensive now, don't allow you to post to the Apple Store. Say nothing. Because what they want you to do is buy this one for $480 a year that allows you to put it on the Apple Store. Yes? This one is called Appy Pie. And Apparently, where is it? Uh, Mashable uses them, Forbes uses them, Huffington Post, you know, uh, better, oh, they're trusted by the Better Business Bureau. By the way, I don't know if you guys know it, but the Better Business Bureau is a scam. Did you know this? They'll, if you have a business, they'll call you and say, somebody complained about your business even if nobody complained about your business. We've got some inquiries about your business here at the Better Business Bureau. We can't tell you who they are because of the anonymity thing. But if you sign up to be a member of the Better Business Bureau for you know, blank dollars a year, then you're more protected from this kind of thing. Better Business Bureau is a scam. Somebody should report the Better Business Bureau to the Better Business Bureau. <laughs> um, so, if anybody ever calls you and says, you've got some inquiries about you from the Better Business Bureau, blah, 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 it's bullshit. That's a gift from me to you. <clears throat> All right, um, and then app developers, these are crazy numbers. Um, I can't even read that. Those, there's too many zeros. I mean, there's, there's a crazy... Can you read that? It's like 5,000 to 250,000 for a game app. 
For a database app, it's 10,000 to 50,000. For a simple app, it's 10,000 plus dollars. This is a web uh, an app developer, right? I say don't go this route. Because guess what happens? Whenever you want to update it, you gotta pay them more money. Every time there's an update. And that's why I don't think you should get a web designer to do your website, unless they're a buddy of yours. Even then, when somebody does something for you, for, for you as a favor, it's kind of hard to get them to make the changes afterwards. You'll be waiting for weeks and we'll be like, yeah, you know, I, I'm too stoned right now, so I could do it like next week for you, dude. You know, don't, don't go that route. Just get Wix, it's super easy. You can build a website in an evening. Am I wrong? Hmm? And that's how long it takes for them to build it. So, um, now again, I do this thing, but I'm not looking to, I don't want to do it for a living. You know, I've built a number of apps, I do it for all my clients, and I pay, it's like $250 a year to be part of this service that allows me to build unlimited apps. But I don't want to do it. I don't get time for that stuff. If I have a paying client, you know, who pays me like $3,000 for me to do their photos and I do their photos, I give them a free app. Why? Because they pay me $3,000 for their photos. And it's the best word of mouth marketing I've ever done. So I think that is something that you should all look into. Please don't come to me and say, Mike, I'll pay you $100 if you do my app. No, I won't do it. 500 go at once. <laughs> Soul. No, no, I'm not. I'm not in that business. But, um, but I do think it's something you should look into for yourself to be able to create an app that you can immediately put on somebody's phone that they don't have to go to the app store, by the way, to do. You just beam it to them. You push a button, you type in their phone number, and it's on their phone. Super cool. And it's way better than a business card because business card requires you to actually read it and then type in the email address to send an email. Read it and then dial the phone, right? But if you have an app that sends you to all of your social media, your website, makes a phone call for you, sends an email for you, that's a beautiful thing. What's that worth to you? To me, it's, it's worth having. It's fast, it's easy. People love fast and easy. Remember, short attention span. If they gotta pick up the business card and read it and type in the email address. And if their web address is eight miles long, like Lara's, they're not gonna wanna type it in. You gotta change that. Um, all right, uh, it's 5.30, I'm supposed to be done. Any, I'll, I'll take like 10 minutes of questions and then I'm going home. Yes. I think you should have them just in case. They're cheap. You can get 500 business cards for $20. That's three trips to Starbucks, right? Get your business cards. Get multiple, one for each product line, right? They're cheap. You should have them. better than nothing, right? Now, who is gonna build a website tonight? One person, two people, three people. All right, who's gonna build a website by this weekend? Who before graduation will have a beautiful, fully functional website with testimonials, with contact page, with a beautiful gallery that's just their specialty? Everybody, raise your hand. You're going to have a better website by the time you graduate this school. That's yourname.com or yourname.mua.com. Mua. Or moi. All right? So that's important. The easiest thing you can do right now is clean up your Instagram, clean up your Facebook, make a, a Facebook page. All this stuff is free and easy. 
then what are you doing at home anyway? Seriously, after work, what, I mean, after school, what do you do? Well, look at cat videos. Stop looking at cat videos and clean up your Instagram and Facebook. Um, that's all I'm talking about tonight. Every time we do one of these, it's gonna be a different subject. I think this is a subject that's super valuable and that you can all act on right away. Resumes take longer because you need to keep adding stuff to those, right? Websites, you need to keep adding stuff too, but you can get that done pretty quickly. It takes forever to work on another movie and another movie and another movie and a photo shoot. It takes a while to build that resume. You still gotta do it, but I think these are really positive changes you can make right away and go to where the food is. All right, any other questions before I let you guys off the hook? Pedro. Yeah, so Mike, one thing that I just wanted to add was make sure you keep track of how much money you're spending on things. Yes. that's gonna help you towards the end. I mean, I just recently graduated and one of the things that has made me kind of successful in what I'm doing is that I'm keeping track of everything that I'm spending, how much money I'm making, because in the long run, everything that you spend to make anything that you're gonna do to advertise, will eventually come to you. The first couple of years are going to be losses. So you're going to make that money back in your taxes. Yep. So make sure if you register your name as a business, you get that money back because you're going you're gonna to be like happy. You're going to go, you know what? I made, I moved forward one or two steps. And one thing that I like, man, that you said was start, at least start your uh, website now. And by the time you graduate, then you can either update it and or finish it or make it public. Mm -hmm. it's gonna, I mean, to me it was a headache because I'm not computer savvy and I have a lot of things wrong on my site, so say shut up. So, um, <laughs> so, so, you know, I'm gonna like, that's why I came today because I wanted to see, okay, what should I change? And now I'm gonna make those changes and I wrote everything down. And they're easy changes. Exactly. They're easy changes. Um, I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge believer in books and audiobooks and some of you may know I drive an hour to work every day an hour back every night and what do I do during that time I listen to audiobooks they're not stories folks they're business books I love them that is what I love it's one marketing is a passion of mine that's why I'm teaching these classes I've studied marketing for the last 30 years when I started my business, I knew nothing about marketing, and I knew nothing about advertising, I knew nothing about running a business. And I learned everything the hard way. And you don't have to. Um, there's some wonderful, wonderful audio books that if you have a long drive or you ride the train to work, to school every day, and you got, don't look at the cat videos. <laughs> Educate yourself. Um, I recently completely changed my, one of my websites. It had everything on there. It had every frequently asked question and some that weren't even frequently asked. They were just asked once in a while, okay? Those were, it was just, I just thought, if I make this a really great educational experience, they know everything there is to know about me, they're gonna give me money. Wrong. You know what they do? They tune it out because there's too much stuff. Too much. Short attention span. And I, um, I got this one audio book that was recommended to me called Building a Story Brand. Have you heard of it? Excellent. Excellent. Now, it is kind of a sales pitch for his services at the end, but the fact is, he teaches you so much in it that you don't need the services if you're, unless you're really, really lazy. If you're not lazy, do what he says. He's even got a little website where you can click on it and build your story brand. It's got questions that it asks and you just fill it out. And at the end, it's a very clear picture of what you do and how to convey it to people. Everyone that we do business with is a person, right? And what most people do when they're marketing their services, they talk about themselves. They make themselves the hero of the story. Who's the hero of the story? The customer. The customer is the hero of the story. If you can make your customer, when they're reading the information on your website, if you can make them the hero of the story, 
you're halfway there. And then it's just a matter of do they like your work. Um, I think you should all listen to that book. There's a whole, I have a list of books that you should all be reading or listening to. Um, and um, you're not gonna like it because it's not pretty pictures and it's not makeup, it's all business. But what makes you money? The thing that we do or the marketing of the thing that we do? And it's always the marketing of the thing that we do. And until you have that paradigm shift in your head, you flip the switch to being a makeup from being a makeup artist to being a marketer of makeup services. You're not going to make as much money doing makeup because you're just I'm a, I'm a makeup artist. How many people are I'm a makeup artist? Walk down the street, especially in this neighborhood, and you're going to run into a lot of people there. I'm a makeup artist, right? So you need to get out of that, I'm a makeup artist. The things I, I'm passionate about with the marketing and, and business stuff, that's the stuff that's gonna make you money, not how to put on a bald cap, not how to lay a beard. Those things don't make you money until you can get the business. Getting the business is the most important thing. Making the money is the most important thing. If you're not making a substantial amount of money at this, it's an extremely expensive hobby. How much does makeup cost? Way too much. Way too much. And then you buy the main brands and it's the same stuff that's in the cheap makeup. Exactly the same stuff that's in the cheap makeup. But you put a, a fancy name on it and all of a sudden it's better makeup. It's not. You guys, you know the show 2020? or Dateline, NBC, those shows. I used to watch those like all the time. And one of them, they had a, an episode about shampoos, the shampoo business. You know what they found? The best quality shampoos were made by Suave. And they all, even the expensive ones, had exactly the same ingredients, just different proportions. So why pay $30 for a run brand shampoo when you can go to Ralph's or CVS and buy a $4 bottle of shampoo that does the same exact thing, just has a different fragrance in it. And I feel the same thing about makeup products. The best eyeshadows I've ever used are made by La Femme. You guys know La Femme? Some of you don't, but La Femme, La Femme is a company that actually manufactures for almost every other makeup company. You buy the La Femme labeled ones, they're like two, three dollars for an eyeshadow. Maybe they're a little bit more now, but even if they're five dollars each, how much is a MAC eyeshadow? Or a Makeup Forever eyeshadow? Like ten times the price. Maybe not ten, but four or five times the price. Same product. You just want to look cool, spend the money, right? You can actually make one of those magnetic palettes and you can take the little tin out of the La Femme and stick it on the magnetic palette and no one will know it's La Femme. <laughs> this is my own private label. This is Mike's brand I should know. <laughs> Case in point, actors are crazy. If you, guys, if you guys haven't realized this yet, actors are insane. There's something inherently wrong with someone who wants to be somebody else all the time. I didn't want to spend fortunes on lotions. So you know what I did? I, I made my own private label lotion. And I got this one actress hooked on this private label. She's like, this is the best lotion I've ever used. This is amazing, what did you put in it? I was like, I can't tell you that. No, really, I can't tell you that. <laughs> you know what it was? Half Nivea, half Lubriderm, mixed together in a new bottle with Mike's label on it. She loved it, she wanted to buy it from me. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I just make small batches and I bring them to set. 
I do. I only make small batches. Because I only buy one bottle each of the two and squirt, squirt them into the other bottles. Actors are crazy. But it's, it's like, it's perception, right? It's their, it's their perception that this is something that's special because I made it with my own hands. Well, I packaged it with my own hands. I squirted it into the new bottle with my, own, with my index finger, right? So, <clears throat> all of this marketing stuff is perception. And if they perceive you to be the manicure, Gucci bag person, and not the makeup artist that's serious, they're not gonna hire you. So I want you to, to just like, everything I've said tonight, I want you to kind of mull it over, kind of, I hope you've created a, some notes and a to-do list, because if you start knocking those things off the to-do list, your website is gonna get better, your Instagram is gonna get better, and also, I've seen people who have Instagrams that literally, it's the same person in the same makeup and there's like 10 pictures of it from just different angles. Right? Don't! I don't wanna see the same makeup 10 times on the same person. Show me one amazing picture, one of that makeup. And if it isn't amazing, don't post it because you didn't impress me. I would rather see a website with 10 photos on it that blow me away than 100 photos that don't. Am I making sense to everyone? Don't put a million photos on there. Now, there's things with Instagram, it's like, well, you should post once a day, every day at 9 a.m. or whatever it is, right? You don't have to. No, but the Instagram police aren't gonna come and get you if you don't post every day at 9 a.m. some amazing photo or a cat picture. <coughs> you should post what's great. You should put what's great on your website. Um, Really, don't repeat images. Don't. You had a couple of scabs, right? On yours, that were like, boom, 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 like two or three pictures of the same scab. Two, right? Do you need two pictures of that scab? Okay, well, here's the cool thing. Nobody knows you have that site yet. How many people know? Like nobody, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. But like, there's something about one of the pictures that you really want to illustrate and something else about the other one. If you did them on Instagram, is it okay to do like a swipe? Yes, okay. absolutely. Because when they, if they just open your Instagram and they see the same picture repeating, yeah, they're like boring. But if they see that picture with the little icon of the multiple pictures and you can swipe, that's fine. Okay. Sure, why not? I mean, again, don't do 10 of the same one. But if you get two different angles, yeah, absolutely. Um, for, at, from a photographer's point of view, sometimes I really like the color version and the black and white version. But I'm not going to put them next to each other. I'm going to put them in the same, and they can swipe. Okay? You want to say something? Absolutely. Um, a reel comes with time. If you've been working for quite a while, you probably have one. If you haven't been working for a long time, you don't have a reel yet. You guys know what I mean when I say a reel, right? Your reel is video samples of your work. Um, I made a reel a long time ago. It was like, it ended up being something like 20 minutes long. And I was like, nobody's gonna watch this. But there were like p pivotal scenes in movies that I had a big part in that effect. So it's like, okay, there's Terminator 2, there's Tremors, there's Predator 2, blah, 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 uh, all these films, and I'm watching it going, this is really taking a long time. <coughs> and if I can't watch it, I don't think anybody else is gonna watch it either. So I think if you're gonna create a reel, make it three minutes or less, and put that reel on your website. You can, 
You can have it on YouTube so it gets views there and then link it in your website, Wix. You can just click Facebook video, not Facebook, uh, YouTube video, and it'll bring up a little box and you can paste in the code that YouTube gives you and now that YouTube video is on your website, but it's also still on YouTube. So they can watch it on YouTube, like it on YouTube, if they follow you or whatever, but it's also on your website. And whatever they watch on your website also counts on your um, numbers on YouTube. Okay. Anything else? We've gone really long now. And I'm getting tired. All right. I am always, always here. Um, if you have questions about any of this stuff. Uh, I don't know what the next class is going to be on next month yet. I don't. Um, but I have a whole list of things I want to talk about. And uh, some of them you'll like and some of you will go, uh, fuck. Um, one of them, I know, is going to be breaking down a script and budgeting. That's not a fast class. That might be a multiple evening class. But that's something you need to know to make money doing this, right? If you don't know how to budget a movie, you're gonna go broke. You're gonna do it for way less than you think, or way less than you should. You might think it's right, and then in the end, you have no money because you used it all on the supplies you didn't realize you needed to buy. So you gotta know how to budget everything. All right, I'm gonna call it a day. I hope everybody enjoyed it, and if you have questions, and you have me on Facebook, you can send me Facebook messages. Um, don't expect me to get back to you like that. I have a life, sometimes. Um, but you can always ask me in school, too. But sometimes I, I don't have the time if I'm teaching a class. You know, people come by, can I talk to you for a second? And then it ends up taking a half hour. So if you have a question, if you send it to me, either through my school email, which is career at cinemamakeup.com, or you send me a Facebook message and tell me in detail what you want to know about, maybe I can prepare some information for you to make it go quicker and more accurately. Okie doke. All right, get out of here.
have two E's. So if they just type it in, they might type it in wrong. This is fine if you're going to send them a link that they just clicked on. But if you just tell somebody in passing, you yeah. have to tell them how to spell it. So, and I think that's the same with a lot of people. Names are misspelled all the time. Yeah, so it's fine. People are always misspelled. So Yeah. Bye.